an important problem in statistics is this. I have a random variable say x and I know its distribution. What is the distribution of some function of that random variable? If you've studied statistics for some time for example you know that say if x is distributed as a Poisson then if I add two independent Poissons I get a new variable which is Poisson. So this problem is about uh, distributions of functions of random variables. Uh, in this video we're going to consider the following problem and it's the most simple one. x is a discrete random variable. We take some function of it, say g, and we say, let's say that's a random variable. And then the question is what is the probability mass function of y? Right, for the discrete case guys, the method is much simpler for the continuous. So what do we do? The method is as follows. For each outcome in Y, I'm going to identify the set of X's from which it comes and then we sum the probability of, of, of those X's. That's the method. And this method guys works whether or not the function G is a one-to-one -one map or not a one-to-one -one map. This distinction is more important when we're dealing with uh, well, x is a continuous. Just remind you what one to one is. Here is one to one. Each output, uh, each input x goes to a distinct, a unique y. Whereas here you can see there is more than here. There's two x's that go to the same y. So that's not one to one. Now let's. I'm going to do example both of these for this exact question. Look at it. The random variable x has a binomial distribution. Okay, it's discrete then. N is four pi is a probability of success is 0.25 in each trial. Some of you might use p, the symbol p, that's fine, just substitute that in. Determine the probability distribution of this guy. Okay, so let's say we want the probability mass function. Let's interpret that as probability mass function of this guy. If you want to interpret that as a meaning the CDF, you can still use the same method and just, um, but we'll get the answer for our probability mass function. Before we get started, let's recall facts about the binomial. So if x follows the binomial distribution, here's the parameters n and pi, and the following. x takes finite number of values, integer values, 0, that means no success in n trials, independent trials, all the way to the maximum value of n. And the probability of observing a particular value of x is given by this. This is the probability mass function for x. So to get us started, because this isn't really part of the video, um, I've given you the, written out this here in terms of the numbers we're given here. So n is 4, so we've got 0 to 4, and the probability of each of those is that. Uh, I've just taken this common factor, 1 over 5, this number out, so it's 81 over that number and so on. These numbers add up to 2, 5, 6, that's good, because that means probability add up to 1, so I've checked that. And uh, yeah, so each of these numbers come from just substituting for n and x and pi for each of these cases. If you're unsure how to do that, just look back at one of my previous videos where I solve, a, solve one of these uh, prob binomial problems. Right, the question wants us to look, find the probability mass function for this function, but I'm not going to do that first because I want because that is not a one-to-one. -one. I'm going to do one-to-one. -one. I said the method works for both, so it doesn't really matter, but I just want to let you see both of them both types. So let's us instead consider this function y equal to x plus 1. Clearly that is 1 to 1. It's a form of a straight line. I'm just sketch it. Well no it's not a straight line. Careful because x is discrete 0, 1, 2. But you can see for each x go x plus 1 will go to a unique y. So let's just and you can see when we write it out here. So x takes the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well if x is 0 what is y? It's 0 plus 1, 1 and so on. I think you can see that. Question is what is the probability mass function for y? Right, so we want to we want to, uh, okay, find that. Uh, we note that y takes finite number of values, so all we have to do is associate the probability with each one of the outcomes and just write a table and that's fine. That's, unless you find a neat formula, which we, we, which we will. So if we look at the following, this is how you think about it. Y y is 1. What's the probability that you get y is 1? 
Well, I can tell what the probability of y is 1 is by going back to the fact that I know about the probabilities of x and x is tied to y. So when y is 1, that's the same as saying that x is 0. When is x 0? Well, just stick the numbers in the prob. It's here. It's right here, isn't it? So I did the table. In other words, probability at y is 1 is that is the same as saying that a probability that x is 0 and I've just used this notation subscript y to denote this is the probability that y of y probability mass function of y and this probability mass function for x these two probability functions are different this is the one that we want to find this is the one that we know because we know it's binomial and you can see that I can repeat the same thing for each of y's so you can see a pattern here the probability mass function for y is related to the probability mass function for x where the input for x is y minus 1. For example, in this case I took y is 1, so this is y minus 1 at 0. I think this is the important step because this is why the subscript comes in. So this is saying this is the binomial and what this is saying is that for this is the argument, the input, so can you see that in pink here this is just all the binomial stuff, the binomial probability mass function except for the argument now instead of writing little x as I did before I substitute for little x for y minus 1. Compare this to the above where I wrote the probability mass function for x. Also see all the bits have changes in orange, uh, orangey brown and this guys note carefully that it's for y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 it doesn't start at 0 because y does not take the value 0. That's it. One remark is this is y is not binomial because you remember a random variable binomial takes a value from 0, 1, 2 all the way to n. Well here it starts at 1 but it is a, this thing is a binomial so basically y is like a binomial with shifted points. It starts at 1 as opposed to 0 and ends what, at 5 instead of 4. Okay, that's only a small thing. Now let's actually turn to the problem this. And the method is the same but this time it's just that it's not going to be 1 to 1 and you're going to see what happens when, when it's not 1 to 1. Okay, now repeat the steps. I write down the y's associated with which outcome of x. So here is what I get. Uh, Alright, so when x is 0, just 0 minus 1 squared is 1, and so on. What I've done here is this colour here, can you see because brown colour because y is 1 twice. So y is 1 when x is 0 and x is 2, and that, it, guys, is because this is not a 1 to 1 function. Here, more than one value of x leads to the same y. Write down the outcomes for the y, 0, 1, 4, 9. I know some of them are repeated, but you know, it's still, it's just the outcome, it's not how many times it appears. That's it. Next, repeat the step. We need to associate probability, tie the probability of y with the probability of, uh, of observing the x's. Okay. y is 0. This is how I'm going to read my table. When is y 0? y is 0 when x is 1 because from up here we can see yeah, this one right here well that means the probability at y is 0 is going to be the same as seeing that probability x is 1 which is this from the, the binomial table for the random variable x everything else is going to be the same except for this case here where it's repeated when is y 1 y is 1 when x is 2 uh, or 0. So in other words, so when this prob what's the probability that y is 1, it's probability that x is 0 or x is 2. I've just changed notation here because I want to actually emphasize this is x is 0 or x is 2. Now each outcome here is, um, in um, can I just do over here, oh I just made a lip smacking sound as well so I know some people don't, okay. This is probability of A and B, union B. Remember how it goes? It's equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. Okay, well, these two events are mutually exclusive. So it means that the intersection is zero, yeah? Because the outcome can't be zero and two 
simultaneously. So for that, the probability is add. So I remember right at the start, I said the method is you just add the probabilities where you've got those outcomes. So that's what I've done, and I've taken each of these again just from the binomial table for the random variable x. Case, the other final case is I'm going to leave you guys to do it. Pick up a pen and paper, that's how you learn this stuff. And so we can actually, I mean, you can leave it like this, but I just want to compile it so that, that's this is my working, this is my answer. This is the probability mass function for y. You fill in these two numbers from up here, check the probability sum to 1. Comment here, guys, is that when people do this, they think because x is a random variable which is binomial, then y is going to be binomial. So they might do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and put... Uh, can I, I just squeeze in here. So they might put 0, 1, and they might put 2, 3, and 4, so on. And 2 because, and they put a zero probability there, yeah? Uh, remark is there, you don't have to do that because this y is not binomial. We've shown that it only takes values, particular values being 0, 1, 4, 9. Because if you were thinking about along those lines of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, putting zero probabilities of 2, 3, all the way up to and all the numbers in between, then why don't you do 10, 11, 12, all the way to whatever, to 1,000 and keep going and just put zero, zero, zero all the way down, see? so. You don't need to do that, but yeah, I understand why people might think y is binomial. So to recap, we've just shown the method of how to find the probability mass function for uh, a function of a discrete random variable in one variable problem. You're probably going to need to do it for the continuous case as well, and that's going to come up in, I've already done one for a long time ago, that was problem 13 for the continuous case, and uh, problem 40 is coming up and that's going to be continuous as well. In case um, I read it earlier, in case uh, somebody interpreted it as a cumulative C, uh, CDF, remember you can just get the CDF from the P probability mass function from the definition. So no need to ask me about questions about that on the in the comments. All right, guys, I'm done. Um, hope that's helpful. Comment, like, share.